Dylan from the Smart Economy Podcast. We're at day two of Permissionless 3. We're joined by Thomas Dougherty, the head of R&D at Tausche. How's it going today, Thomas? It's great. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm psyched to chat with you. And we've been kind of like kicking off all these conversations to just hear everybody's genesis story and to how they got into blockchain and maybe even how you got into AI. Or if yeah, the two were like Yeah, yeah, yeah. AI for me was a little bit before. I was kind of a stats math nerd for okay. a bit. I did my PhD and I was using AI for my my work and, and I loved it you know I was doing a lot of computer vision work but um, the way I got into blockchain was a little bit more circuitous I, I had a great conversation with the CEO of Taoshi who at the time was just getting started building our product and I was looking for open source projects to contribute to you know it seemed like a really interesting one I talked with Arash Savolian who's our CEO he's a great guy and I was like all right this is just a cool project that I want to jump into and he was like we're moving really fast we need you and I'm like, all right let's go so you know I jumped in with it with that group and uh, and and we've had such a journey which I'm happy to talk on but uh, Awesome. Yeah, so yeah. I think a lot of folks are just kind of like grokking like how AI and blockchain get together. So this might be the first time that our listeners are ever hearing of Taoshi. So yeah, yeah, what's yeah. kind of like the 10,000 foot level elevator yeah. pitch for what you guys do? So I think the important perspective here is about BitTensor more generally, because a lot of people like need familiarity with BitTensor. So BitTensor is this kind of umbrella organization that we live inside of. And basically what it does is it lets groups define essentially games. And the output of the games should essentially be a valuable commodity, like these super commodities okay. that you can generate through some sort of collective intelligence. And then ideally you can sell that. So, you know, some groups on BitTensor are generating images, some are generating text, LLMs, doing research in this topic. Ours is a financial product. So we essentially task our miners with curating better financial predictions. And we can curate that into a super portfolio of our top traders, and we can sell that. So let's yeah. also go like a step lower. Like, yeah. what is the BitTensor network, and what are these sub networks that you guys are yeah. creating? So it's a great question. Um, you know, AI and blockchain kind of live in two different worlds. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's because you don't want to put a lot of information on the blockchain. It gets so slow. So the way that BitTensor has married the two is through a really simple mechanism, where all of the the really complex compute is run offline. So the miners are running a lot of their sophisticated AI models. And validators are running a lot of compute, but the validators who are interacting with the blockchain and actually distributing value to the miners, all they put is the value attribution for each of the miners. So they essentially put a, a list of weights for each of the miners on the blockchain. That's it. So they are running complex code, and the distillation of that is just a list of weights for their miners. And that's all that goes on the blockchain. But that way, you can decentralize essentially all the major compute, but keep it unified into this, this system. Cool. And so before yeah. we hit the record button, we were actually talking about how like BitTensor is having its heyday on crypto Twitter yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. And I, I guess I'm curious, like, is BitTensor the best type of AI blockchain-ish network that's out there? Like, why did you guys choose to build on BitTensor? Is it the only thing that's available? Are there competitors? What was that kind of landscape like? Yeah, great question. So. Um, I think if I take a million mile perspective on the state of AI and decentralized technologies right now, the thing that's really going to have to happen for value to be extracted from this whole process of decentralizing it are decentralizing the data, decentralizing the compute, decentralizing the models, and essentially the infrastructure to deliver that. Mm -hmm. And all of these components are living yeah, on so... BitTensor right now. And right now what we're seeing is marriage between these subnets to work together in more harmony. And when you build that value chain through to completion, every person can contribute at some component and extract value. So BitTensor had that, and they had that community that we wanted to tie into. And so those two things really drew us into it, and they had the infrastructure in place as well that we could just chain into. So it just felt like a great fit. So you referred to kind of like taking information from these different parts that contribute yeah. to BitTensor as a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how does Taoshi kind of like like gamify this yeah, and yeah. then enable it for people who participate in the Taoshi ecosystem yeah. to kind of like trade or maybe make economic decisions off of? Yeah, so the, essentially the rules that we laid out for our miners are to bring in the most returns possible but in a risk-controlled way. Okay. And we use an evaluation period to make sure that whatever approach they take is sustainable. So that's the task that they're given. And the ones who can return the most or increase their portfolio value the most in this simulated trading environment, they're the ones who are attributed benefit in our platform. The ones who don't do that, who have unsustainable strategies or take a big nosedive, they immediately get pruned out from our system as the system kind of protects itself from these unsustainable approaches. 
So that's essentially it. That's essentially the approach. Yeah. So am I like basically taking risk strategies to become a more competent miner? It's taking what risk, like risk yeah. strategies to become a more competent miner. As in like testing a strategy, seeing if it works, yeah, and then yeah. building another one. Yeah, you can. There's um there's a registration fee and a challenge period. So what we we really want our miners to come in with confidence that they have a good approach. They okay. have a strategy prior. So you know we have our test net where they can practice and see if they're going to be competitive. Um, and then we have an initial preliminary challenge period where they come in. So it's not like free to enter and, and, and participate, but the upside is massive. You know? And that's really one of our major driving benefits is that we compare ourselves to traditional prop trading firms. Mm -hmm. And those, you know, they make a ton of profit on registration fee. We don't. So the registration fee that you uh, submit to actually participate with Taoshi, we don't collect. That goes into the BitTensor ecosystem, right? It's like recycled. So we really want to see our miners do well. Uh, and so we want to give them all of the resources that they need to do that. And so we've made a lot of OSS infra for helping them collect data, helping them train models, helping them get integrated with our platform, and we'll continue to do so. So you're democratizing the prop trading firm strategy. Exactly. And so you guys currently have a campaign going on right now? Campaign? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah we're definitely uh, trying to get the word out for what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we're building a lot and, uh, and, and we want to share that with, with the world. So. Every time we make a, an update or release on new OSS info or something like that, we kind of wave the flags and you know sound the banners. <laughs> but, yeah. What's the PTN though? The Prop Trading Network. So PTN is this game that I'm talking about. That got is it, the trading, it. this trading ecosystem where yeah. we sell the outputs of that to to the validators who can. So how did you guys choose to like double down on this vertical? Because AI is going to become all encompassing. There's agents that everyone uses today, or not agents, chat GPT. There's this forthcoming like smart bots that we're calling agents. AI is just going to become a part of our everyday lives. How did you guys like double down and decide this is the vertical to focus on? So what we're actually really focused on with our miners is the quality of output. And AI will continue to evolve, new models will continue to be created, new data will continue to be developed and incorporated, but at the end of the day, you know, having a specific return, or having an idea about what it means to do well in terms of bringing in risk-adjusted returns mm -hmm. will always be the same. So we wanted to make that concrete and give people an opportunity to jump in quickly and, and start to, to, to compete and get rewards, but build around that narrative, you know? So, you know, as the world kind of grows around us, we can keep kind of the same idea in place. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. So as head of R&D, what are like your tasks? What are the big problems that you're trying to, to chew on? Yeah, and there's a constant evolution of our, um, we call it a network model. This idea of if we synthesize our top miners into a super strategy, how well can we do, mm -hmm. you know? And, and from a security, stability, from a uh, returns perspective, you know, how can we optimize these things? How can we edge out these uh, uh, unhealthy behaviors that we may see in gaming? You know, is, if this is prevalent, how do we mitigate that? Or, um, so it's, it's monitoring, it's proposing solutions, designing uh, new ecosystems, you know, for our, for our trading community. Um, it's leading OSS infrastructure. It's, uh, you know, studying risk and, and how does our model incorporate risk and how are we thinking about that? Building that into the incentive mechanism. So it's infinite improvements with that mm -hmm. um, and, and making that easier for our miners to use. And so being bridged between the AI world and the blockchain world, both highly innovative, cutting edge technologies, yeah. just the ecosystems are crazy. massively different from quarter to quarter. Pretty crazy. How do you keep up like which, which Barely. sector is moving <laughs> faster than Barely. the other? Uh, yeah, great question. I, I, our community is just awesome about this, to be honest. You know, they bring so much conversation to the forefront and we really want to be engaged with our community. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, their feedback is just huge and, and they bring to Insight, um, you know, new models, new data. Um, they give us feedback about the stuff that we create for them, you know. Um, so really staying in tune with them is, is probably one of our best ways. Reading if we can, like, uh, <laughs> you know, but, but yeah, like you said, so fast, both of them. So, so you guys are just like crowdsourcing what to focus on based off of the needs of your users? Partially, partially, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, at the end of the day, you know, we, uh, we curate all this information. We want to deliver value to our miners and to anybody who's using our product. So we need to listen to both people who want to consume our trades um, and people who are producing the trades. You know, to make it easy through the pipeline, and we have these, uh, you know, these these grant plans kind of to build more talent in our pool. We want to make big investments that way. 
So we want to run things like hackathons in the future, and we want to give resources to the like, university students who may not have the access to data to train these models, mm -hmm. who may not have familiarity with that. You know, um, so we're going to be dedicated to you know, continuing to push out research and trying to make that available for our community, uh, build open source models that they can build on top of and compete with. Is like always been one of our focus points. So that's another branch of our work. Yeah, so there's a, a common theme I've been trying to have with the conversations here is yeah. we're, we're just about to have our election cycle. There's regulatory ambiguity for crypto in the U.S. Maybe AI is just starting to get to the congressional level. There's conversations maybe people do or don't understand it. How do these sort of uh, gray zones that we're in right now and um, kind of like a toss of the quarter for which direction support is going to go in this country for these type of innovative industries and assets, how does this kind of like impact your ability to look forward and state with some certainty that we will be fine to continue building here? This is an industry that I have staying power in for 5, 10, 15 years. So we trade in information on our platform. So, um, you know, r right now we, we gather information, we curate the information, we package it up and then we sell it, hey guys, right? So um, in terms of cryptocurrencies, our traders are actually not trading a lot. Most of our top traders are actually trading traditional financial assets. And that was intentional because we wanted people who already had models to be able to jump in and compete. Um, we love working in BitTensor and, uh, and obviously we want to maintain that and we want BitTensor to continue to succeed. We've, yeah, put a lot of, uh, of our blood, sweat, and tears into it as well. But um, it, it's it's a really interesting question, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think our, our approach with, with information is probably the way we hedge against that a bit. Got it. But, um, yeah. Cool. Information focused. Yeah. And then lastly, we're here at Permissionless. Have there been any key takeaways in the conversations you've had over the past day and a quarter? It's awesome to see people engaging with it. You know, it's a, we've had so, many, so much interest. So many people are, are interested in BitTensor and, and have heard about what we're doing, which is just so cool to engage with our community. Um, and if they hadn't heard about us, you know, now they have. So it's just been, it's, it, it's just been really cool to, to, to learn about the projects. A lot of excitement right now in this space, and it's really cool to be a part of it. So who do you want to chat with, and what's the best way they can reach out to you? Um, right now we're looking for traders. So if you're a trader and you have a great strategy, come find our platform, Taoshi.io. Um, register as a miner, come compete. Uh, payouts can be substantial if you're, if you're competitive and we'd love to have you. We want to incorporate you into our system. Awesome. Thanks for yeah. your time, Thomas. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. This is, uh, if you want to see any of the other interviews we've had here at Permissionless, head over to the Neo News Today YouTube channel to see a recording of all of our interviews.